Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Tonight's film is 1973's Scream Bloody Murder. This is part of a Scream Theater DVD double feature release by VCI uh, Entertainment. Uh, it's a double feature with Scream Bloody Murder and Sisters of Death. But we are looking at Scream Bloody Murder. There is the cover right there. And the tagline is, a bloodbath of horror. Never before has the screen shrieked with such horror. This is 1973's Scream Bloody Murder. Now I'm showing you this double um, feature DVD here from Scream Theater, VCI Entertainment. Um, because this film is very hard to come by. You can find uh, some VHS copies. And you can find a lot of like weird DVD releases of this film, like this double feature here, and also, um, you know, kind of some other scattered releases. I mean, VCI Entertainment, this is an official distribution company, um, but they're all very bare bones releases uh, taken from, you know, old prints, things like that. Um, so this is a this is a film you can find, but it's. Um, kind of hard to come by and it's definitely you're not going to find this film remastered in any form or fashion as of yet uh, it is a fairly obscure film an unknown film and it is available on kind of these uh low budget underground dvd releases scream bloody murder you know, folks, I was not prepared for this. Now, the one thing that I that I did know um, is that I saw a trailer of this movie, and that's how I discovered it. And immediately, I was interested in seeing this. Um, I also know that Rob Zombie, off of his latest album, Venomous Rat Regeneration Vendor, actually utilized a sample from this film that I didn't realize until I saw the trailer, and I and I recognized it immediately. This film essentially um, deals with the mental illness and um, obsession of a son and uh, for his mother and the rampage of chaos that erupts as a result of that mental illness obsession with his mother. Now I will tell you, you can throw out maybe some of your preconceived notions of what that means exactly. Um, you know, like Psycho or, or 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 you know, tons of other serial killer films of that of of, of you know with that storyline of that ilk. This is a very very violent brutal and dark and very very disturbing i think that you know that is really key here it's a very disturbing film um you know this is a low budget early 70s movie that um my gosh has not gotten any attention as far as i know i mean i i don't even hear about it in horror circles this is um you know this is really i mean if you think of films like maniac with joe spinell um, if you think of, you know, films like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, things like that, where you are really kind of left in the world of the person with the mental illness or the person um, who is killing or the person, you know, who is really deranged when you are left in this person's world for, you know, 90 minutes. I mean, this film, I believe, is 85 minutes. You're left in this world of chaos. Um, let's get into this movie a little bit here, uh, because I do know um, that this, especially for early 70s, was considered an extremely um, kind of cutting edge, no pun intended, violent film with blood. Um, it's it stated in the back of this DVD release that it was the first motion picture to be called Gornography. And I, you know, I don't know um, the facts about that, but that's what it says in the back here. And I can definitely tell you that this film was made in 1973, and right now it's 2016. And this film is still, to me, considered an ex 
an extremely violent film, one of the most violent films I've seen, actually. And when I say violence, I do mean violence and not gore, although there is a ton of blood. But you're not getting, like, you know, flesh and intestines and things like that, okay? But you are getting bloodletting and you are getting visceral violence in this film um, in many different ways, many different people uh, in a very shocking manners with the elderly, with, with, with uh, pets, animals, um, family members, uh, just innocent people. And it is a very, very creatively twisted and very, very brutal film. Let's get into this movie. Let's start off with the cinematography for this film. You know, in the first five minutes of this movie, I immediately knew that we were onto something special here. The cinematography for this film is not the type of cinematography that I am accustomed to for a low-budget, unknown horror film like Scream Bloody Murder. There are freeze frames, there is slow motion, There, there's one, just one time where there's a slide uh, fade, where the screen kind of slides to the side, um, and uh, you, actually it's popularized in Rob Zombie's Devil's Rejects at certain sections, where the screen kind of slides to the side. Um, there are also these amazing, there, there, there are two in particular, the end of the film, unbelievable and there's another weird section at a dining room table where the where there's this this panning shot backwards slowly though kind of revealing the rest of what is in the room as it pans back slowly you know so in essence it's you know it's doing this and it's doing it so elegantly and so interestingly there is amazing cinematography in this film for such a low budget film of this ilk you know in the grindhouse circuit the drive-in circuit where this film was probably being played maybe in 42nd street new york city um but you know there's really there are some great camera shots um some hallucinogenic uh, cinematography at times mixing and melding colors in a weird kind of filter that's altering people's heads and faces in a very scary manner bringing nightmarish type hallucinatory sequences in this film that are very haunting and very creepy uh, and weird. Um, when we go into the music for this film, this is predominantly a film that leaves you in silence, except for some dark, disturbing stings and some very uh, kind of um, creepy uh, carnivalesque organ music that is almost without melody. It's almost a, caca a cacophony of chaos. And then there's also elements of like kind of 70s. Um, kind of 70s band dramatic uh, types of music that you almost wouldn't even think fit with a film this disturbing in a way. Um, kind of 70s dramatic music, you know, utilizing, um, uh, you know, horn pieces and drums and guitars and things like that. Um, kind of dramatic in a way, not even horrific. So you have all these different elements in here. Now, I do want to tell you right off the bat, I was completely shocked. Look for a young Angus Scrim in this film. That is correct, folks. Look for a young Angus Scrim in this film. Yes, the tall man from Phantasm. He is in here, and he is the youngest I've ever seen him in cinema, in this film, and nobody talks about this freaking movie. And he has a um, a nice role in here. Now, I gotta tell you that the acting, I thought, was great. Actually, my favorite actress in this film um, the favorite actor in this film, in general, was uh, this this woman who has a really one of an extremely large part in this film, uh, who plays a prostitute artist. Um, she, I just thought she was awesome. I've never seen anybody else in this film. The lead in this film acted very weirdly. You couldn't tell if it was his acting or if you couldn't tell if it was his character. Very bizarre stuff. And I got to tell you right off the bat here, folks, we have very disturbing um, sequences in here. This is this film is very shocking. You know, um, if you're sensitive to things with children, if you're sensitive to things with animals, like I said before, um, or just, you know, kind of... Uh, entrapment and, you know, carjackings and, uh, you know, women in peril. I mean, this is a really, really, uh, 
a very, very twisted movie because you are with the lead character who is indeed extremely twisted. There are some there there is a creative twistedness to this film. Um where you know, really the film plays out with suspense and terror in 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 in, in very kind of psychotic ways um you are left in real time almost with this with this film as it moves and breathes and you are left in this kind of disturbing what is going to happen next terror uh kind of this slow pacing suspense um torture uh you know essentially we we have a film here where you know, people are being tortured. People are being murdered. And I thought the writing for this movie was very well done. It was very psychotic dialogue and very psychotic thought processes and very psychotic actions. Um, I really was affected by the violence in this film. I was really affected by the way the violence panned out. And the, this wasn't the type of violence that was just, you know, it kind of happens and then the camera cuts away. I mean, you're really there with it. And it's disturbing and it's uh, it kind of stays with you uh, after this movie. This is definitely um, a diamond in the rough to me. If you, you know... If uh, if you are looking for 70s horror, unflinching, brutal, violent, um, and very, very interesting, um, low-budget 70s, you know, kind of driving grindhouse horror, here it is, folks. Scream Bloody Murder, 1973. It is my pleasure to talk about this film on the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page. Definitely, you want to check that out. Um... Thank you so much for watching this uh, YouTube review and all my reviews on this 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page. Please feel free to check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Thank you and good night.